This is a little video to help you try a solar light project. You can get one of these solar lights here in the US for about a dollar and it has everything you need. It's easy to hack. Uh, you can make it better or at least more interesting. The way these cheap solar lights work is when the sunlight's hitting the solar panel, it's charging the battery. When the sunlight goes away, it turns on the link between the battery and the LED. They're easy to take apart. There's just two screws and there's two wires coming from the solar panel attached to the little circuit board. The battery is held in by two metal clips that are folded over. You can bend them back to get the battery out. Getting a rechargeable AA battery, a solar cell, a circuit board, a housing, and shipped from China for less than a dollar, it's truly amazing. The circuit board is held in by just one screw and it's uh, very simple. It has an on and off switch, um, a little uh, chip on it, an inductor, and the LED is directly attached. How can we hack this light? Well, we can put in a better battery. This will give us longer run time and a brighter light. We can also put on a bigger solar panel. You don't want to go too big because you'll overwhelm the battery, but this 2 volt model will work just fine. And of course we can change the LED, maybe to a color. You can do one or all three things to your dollar solar light. One LED? I think we can do better than that. With our upgraded battery and solar panel, we can go for one of these 20 LED strings. If you do this, you have to remember to get the 3 volt model. You can tell they're three volt if they use two double A's or these coin cells. If we're going to be making our own light, we need a couple more things. I'm going to use a 47 micro Henry inductor and a QX5252F chip, which is used in many of these lights. The inductor on the original circuit board is 470 micro Henry's. It tries to make the best out of its little battery. The 47 micro Henry inductor will let in more power at the cost of battery life, but since we upgraded our battery and our solar cell, we can afford it. The first time I tried this out, I soldered all the leads and then covered them in hot glue. It looked terrible, but it worked. Next, I tried to up my game by making circuit boards at my local makerspace. It took a few tries, but eventually they came out pretty good and they worked. Feeling brave, I decided to order some from a PCB factory. While quote-unquote improving them, I lost track of scale and made them way too big. But they do work, and they're good at showing people how to put them together. These pieces are connected the exact same way they were on the dollar store solar light. There are several ways you can make the connections without any fancy equipment or circuit boards. The most important thing to know is which wires connect to which pins. You have a 1.2 to 2 volt solar panel, a rechargeable battery, AA or AAA, an inductor with a value between 47 microhenry and 470 microhenry. Your choice of LEDs. I like these strings of fairy lights. Added benefit, they are waterproof. And they come in all kinds of colors. Use a QX5252F chip. 
The chip has four legs. If you lay it down with a lettering facing you, the legs are numbered like this. Pin 1 is in the leftmost position and pin 4 the rightmost. Your solar panel will have a positive and negative lead. Of course your battery does too. Your LED has a positive and negative wire as well, but they're not marked. When you cut the wires from the battery compartment, you may have to remove the insulation that makes the LEDs waterproof. Once you do that, you can use a coin cell battery to test the lights. When they come on, see which side of the wire is on the positive side of the battery. That is your positive wire. Your inductor doesn't have a positive and negative side, so it'll work either way. I flip it around just for good luck. Solar cell positive to pin 1, negative to pin 3. LED positive 4, negative pin 3. Battery positive pin 2, negative 3. The inductor connects to pin 2 and pin 4. There are lots of ways you can make this circuit. One of the easiest is to solder the wires directly onto the legs of the chip and then encase it in something like epoxy or silicone. The circuit is usually out of sight. I will tell you hot glue is not a good idea because it melts in the sun. Now that you have your electronics completed, you need an enclosure. Glass jars are good choices. Plastic ones work well too. My favorite ones are these small canning jars. They have decorations in the glass that refract the light. And because they're small, they look like they're full of LEDs. The only downside is the lids don't do well outside. They rust. I made these cool acrylic boxes on a laser engraver at the Makerspace. They have a bunch of holes in them, which actually works out better, in my opinion, outside than the sealed jar versions. Assembly is basically the same no matter what container you use. Your lid should be big enough to accommodate your circuit plus the battery. If your lid is metal, make sure you don't have contacts from your circuit shorting out. Here I use some electrical tape to isolate them. Your solar cell also has contacts on the back that need to be isolated from a metal lid. Next you'll need to drill a hole in the lid to run the wires from your solar cell to your circuit. Most of the time you'll want your solar cell to lay flat, unless you have a situation where the sun doesn't really pass overhead because of where you mount it. I'm using hot glue here to show you the areas that you should cover, but you are far better off using silicone or epoxy. I am providing some strain relief for the wires and covering the contacts so they don't short out against the lid. If you're using a glass jar as your container, we're going to want to seal it pretty well. So put some silicone on the top and the bottom of the lid. If you're using plastic or acrylic, um, sealing it up isn't as important. In fact, you should drill holes in the bottom so that any water condensation uh, can drain out. This is a five minute epoxy that uh, works good for all these things as well as the silicone that we talked about. I use double sided VHB tape to stick down the circuit boards and batteries in the lids. It's made for outside and works great. A 
electrical tape works well to keep the leads from shorting out on the metal lids. When you're positioning your components on the lid, make sure you have enough room for the lid to screw onto the jar without crushing the components or pinching the cables. Of course, you would unravel the LEDs, spread them out, and maybe even put some decorations in the jar. Here's one of those small jars where I put in some green plastic rocks and some green LEDs. This is a semi-transparent blue acrylic box where I've cut stars into it and put blue LEDs inside. This one sits on a PVC stand. It has aluminum foil on the bottom, sparkle glue, and multicolored LEDs. This is fluorescent green acrylic with purple UV LEDs. I hope you got some ideas and enough information to try your own solar light project.